Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab and the restoration of a World War II aircraft radio receiver known as a BC-348. In the previous video, the majority of you chose number two, which is this receiver right here. So, number two it is. Let's get started. Here's the BC-348 number two. So, the very first thing that we want to do is see how we're going to get this thing apart. Now, we don't want to disassemble this thing down to the point of taking the face off this thing. And for very good reason, I'll tell you this. If you have a BC-348 or any of this series, they have a wrinkle coat finish on it. And whenever you start removing screws, you get this type of a thing. Chunks of that wrinkle coat will just come off with the screw. So if you don't have to remove the face, you definitely don't want to do that. We can remove this. So these two little thumb wheels here, or thumb screws, these unscrew and then we can take the dial glass off here and then there's two dial lights under here that are very easily replaced right here and here so that very nicely lights up the dial you know what one of the first things i really want to do with this that'll tell us if we maybe need to take this face off or not is if you were watching the previous video here let's move you down here so you can see this if you're watching the previous video Somebody put these stickers on here. I guess they didn't know the bands. So let's see what happens if we take these off. If we can, this is going to leave a permanent mark on here. See, look at this. So this is what people do, right? It's like, did you really need to know that? Was that that important? Really? So there's one there. Let's put this stick this down to the bench. Oh look, another one. So if I can't clear this off, at least get the sticky stuff off, like they put one down here now, then I'll just replace this with the dial out of the other one and then that'll require the entire removal of the face on this thing to get that out. Do we have any more? Oh look, another I don't know why people do this. So, that's just about as bad as, you know, every old microphone and radio, people used to take either their driver's license number or the social insurance number and they used to grind it into the face of the radio or the mic. I think I've told this story before. I have a beautiful looking um, D104 type microphone, a static microphone, and it had a chrome base on it and they had ground their number right into the chrome base, right at the front of the microphone. So you buy a beautiful looking microphone and then you completely deface it. It's just, I don't know, it's, it's odd. I guess different mindset way back when. That is still sticky too. So I can try a bunch of different products to see if we can get this off. So what I'll do is I'll go grab a product right now and horribly stinky product and let's see if we can maybe get rid of this and see if it'll come off. I have a feeling that there's going to be a, a stain here that's going to be rather permanent. Okay, so here's a product called Goof Off. You'll also notice that the hum level in the video has dropped just a little bit. So the heating system in here has two motors that are strapped to a wall because it's a geothermal system and that wall is acting like a big speaker so the two pumps on there are vibrating the wall so it's another thing that I'm going to have to rectify I guess you could say to uh, get the humming out of this uh, mic setup here okay so when you're doing this it's always good to keep an eye on the color here when you start to see black that means that it's actually starting to take the paint so, and it is taking it off just a little bit, but what do you do? So I'll get the rough stuff off and uh, we'll see if that does anything. Look at that, taking it right off. So, no good. So I'm not going to be getting that these off. That's just this horrible. So it looks to me like we're going to be taking the face off this radio receiver and we'll go to the next step here. Okay, so this is going to be quite a process. Again, if you don't have to do this, you definitely don't want to be removing the face off of any of these radio receivers because, again, like the paint chips on this, it's so easy to chip this paint. 
which is uh, unfortunate. That's just uh, kind of the, the way crinkle coat paint goes. So you have to find a kind of a flat black semi-gloss type of paint and then just touch up the marks on the face and that's what will be done here. And uh, the knobs are of course they always wear on the edges and things like that you can see here. So I'll probably end up touching that up as well. Okay, I'll get some tools ready here and let's remove the entire face off this radio receiver and then we'll use the other BC348Q, not the one that's complete, but the BC348Q as, uh, as parts for this one here. So it's good that we got a, a spare parts rig. All right, we'll start by removing the knobs here. Hopefully that is going to allow that to him loosen up. Easy enough to get all this stuff off here. Take off the old toilet handle down at the bottom. There it is. If you ever have a you know faulty toilet, you could always use the BC348 as your flush handle. Okay, so there's that. And this one here is going to be here. Now they made these things, you know, relatively easy to take apart because they need to be serviced, you know, pretty quick. If something goes goes wrong with one of these things, you know, they need to be be serviced right now. There's no time to be fooling around, especially if you're on a plane or something like that and something goes wrong. Very interesting dial or band changing. So, nice thing about these is everything feels so positive too when uh, when you're switching things around, you know, everything is so firm and positive with uh, with these things, right? There's just no... They didn't mess around when they put these things together. So they did a whole bunch of neat things in the design, and I'll talk a lot about that design. That's knob is rolling away on me there. I'll talk a lot about the design here and uh, some of the some of their design, the ideas that the engineers used when they put this together. So it's uh, a lot of thought that uh, some of the you know, other radio manufacturers could have actually used and uh, they would have made a more dependable device. And of course, at that point, it would have probably, uh, I think this one here is a little bit longer than the other ones. The other radio manufacturers could have uh, could have used that, but it would have probably cut down a lot on the repairs. So let's see. Oh, no, is it getting loose? It is getting loose, but it's needs to be adjusted. So as you know, I'm not too concerned about the dial because we have a parts radio and kind of gives us an excuse anyways to just disassemble this whole thing and I can show you the entire process. There it is. All right, so that's good. That's out of the way. Dial lights, get that one out of here. So there we go. Now there's a bunch of other screws here that are going to hold the face on and we'll have to remove these and all sorts of things. This is dial light control up at the top here. The next thing we need to do is remove some of the wires that are attached to the dial light. And things like that because these are the things that are going to hold things back. There's a big blob of solder on here that somebody's put on here before. So. I don't know what's going on with that. I sure doesn't want to melt. Probably because it's touching the aluminum and it's sinking the heat away. There it is. Okay. So there's one. And the next one is on the underside. So this wire comes out here and then goes through a little wafer board and onto the underside of the chassis here. Okay, so let's see what we got going on here. Sometimes it does help to add new solder. Oh, that one's, see, yeah, somebody's definitely been in here. See how easy that came off? So somebody's definitely had the face of this thing off before. So that is done. This here and this here. So what we need to do is desolder the connection to the jacks on the front here, so these quarter inch jacks, hopefully you can see this. Hard for me to do with a big hand in the way, right? Let's see if I can do this on an angle where you can see what's going on. Yeah, 
And now we need to get rid of the antenna post jack, which is right about here. So we'll do that. It's relatively easy to get off that one. We can see that. Is my hand in the way? Not so bad. There, that comes off nice and easy. Okay, three eighths. Just about. Okay, so that gets that out of there. Now let's see what we're binding up on. Something is locking that in there. This little thing right here, there's a little tab. You can see that there is a little spring-loaded tab right here that you need to press down with your finger in order to get that out because it's stopping it right here. Okay, so press that down and there it is. Comes right out. And the nut on the other side, put this back on so we don't lose that. Nut right there, put the nut here on this as well so you don't lose it. I think I'm gonna probably have to hold that from the back side. Okay, so there's a bunch more screws I'm gonna have to get out, and that's just gonna be tedium to sit and watch. So, what I'm going to do is I'll just get the rest of all of the screws out that need to be removed, and I'll come back and then we'll remove this together. And there we go. And that is ready to come off. This is interesting apparatus here. Oh, and it looks like they've driven a pin through this. Got a pin. So that might be a little bit difficult to get that off. That might be quite the thing to do. Wonderful. So, looks like they put a pin through here. Let's take a look, closer look at that. I have to pull that pin out. Or push it out one or the other. Maybe it's tapered. Who knows? So, and that'll get this, at least the front unit off here, which would be, uh, you know, nice to get rid of this horrible sticky tape. And on the bottom side here, it's a good thing. Maybe we did take the face off because we have to open that little access hatch, that little, that little door on the front. Let's back you out here just a touch. We have to open that little access hatch to get into here, and this is very tough to work on. So this is an old cap that'll have to go, and this is another old cap that'll have to go right here. And uh, on the face, we'd still have to, rolling away on me here, we'd still have to remove this. Now I'll probably replace this anyways because the paint is chipped or try and touch it up. So you'd normally have to remove this to service this area right here, right? So that would be pretty tough to get at and tough to get out of there. So it's a good thing that that did come off and that gives us a chance to touch this. Now this, somebody's made some pretty hokey uh, modifications here. So, so yeah, all sorts of things that can be done to this receiver too, to, uh, you know, make it, I guess you could say, perform just a bit better. Uh, as I mentioned in the past, so many people have come in here and they've done modifications out of magazines without really any thought. They just go, oh, what a neat mod, and they put the stuff in. Uh, there are some tasteful, you know, mods that could be done to this, like product detector. And uh, maybe one amp stage between the, you know, the, the last IF and the the audio output tube, something like that. So, but anyways, we'll worry about that in the future. We're going to bring this thing back to stock here and uh, run this thing the way it was supposed to be run way back when, and then down the road we'll go and do that. Look at these parts are just tacked in. Have you seen, look at that, see that? Yeah, it's just laying across that terminal and just a little bit of solder touch there. So, 15K ohms. 
So lots of stuff to do here. So yeah, in the next video, what we're going to end up doing, I'll back this out here. In the next video, what we're going to end up doing is I'll show you my process to clean the chassis. We'll clean the chassis up really, really nice. We'll test all the tubes and we'll come under here and we'll see what they've done on the top here. I'll just move you up so you can see what I'm pointing at. We'll see what they've done here. These uh, resistors look pretty charred up. We'll replace the caps in the power supply and maybe even redesign it a little bit. And we'll see how, see how well they've done. You know, there's lots of stuff that needs to go missing. All these parts need to get replaced. You know what? Let's take a look at the schematics and see the difference between the Q model and the other one with the um, much busier IF section. So I'll go grab some schematics and we'll take a look. I know a lot of you said, oh, the other one looks like it's designed a little bit better. I think what they've done is they just streamlined everything. I don't think it's so much of a better design. I think it's reducing parts and uh, just streamlining the process. Here are the two radios. So this is the Q model, BC348-Q. And the other one turns out to be a BC348-H as the VT152 output tube. So looking at the two schematics here, we have the first RF, second RF, first RF, second RF, that's the same. You'll notice that in the Q model, which is the one that we're working on here, we have the first detector and oscillator. So this is a mixer tube, whereas in the other radio, we have a separate oscillator and we have a separate mixer tube over here. And that's the reason we have the voltage regulator for the plate supply of the oscillator tube. Now I talked about the inherent stability of these oscillators without an actual regulator tube in a signal generator video that I did years and years and years ago. And um, without going over that, the design of this oscillator here is very stable without actual voltage regulation. So kind of a neat uh, improvement on this. And of course we get rid of that one little tube. Now, I'm not saying that this is any better than this one. It's just a different take on things. They're trying to reduce parts. So you can see, like, we have the transformers in the queue. We have one, two, and three, right? Whereas we have all the ones. You see the adjustment points, right? So we have one here, one here, one here, one here, one here. So lots of, you know, coupling transformers. You can see here that we have, you know, the first IF. We have the first IF. It looks like they have got the crystal on the output side of the first IF in this schematic. All right, you see how we were coupled into this directly from here, whereas they have this on this other side of the IF here, right? So the crystal's on the input side and this is on the output side of the first IF. And we have our second IF right here. So this is the second IF and, and CW oscillator in this one. And then we have a third IF tube, right? We have third IF, third IF. And then we have a second detector, AVC and CW oscillator. So the VT233 has, you know, two diode plates in it. So it's actually technically three tubes, a triode and, and two separate diode plates. Something like a 6AV6 would be, or, you know, a standard type of uh, detector tube in a, in a modern type of radio. 6AT6, 6AV6, you know, that kind of idea, right? But in, a, you know, an octal package here. And in this one here, you can see that we know we have our third IF, second detector, and AVC with the VT93 just itself right here. So you can really see they've kind of compacted things in this radio and they're using a more modern tube set so they can get away with it. So there really is, you know, these are very close. It's just that, again, they've just compacted things a little bit in this model. So it'll be kind of fun down the road to compare the H model, you know, completely tuned and restored to the Q model, you know, completely tuned and restored and see, uh, you know, they're probably, you know, right beside each other, right? You know, they've, you know, probably ride right beside each other, but it would be an interesting to see any of the, uh, I guess you could say, uh, idiosyncrasies of the two between each other. So kind of interesting. So that is the two schematics for these two radios. So now what I'm going to do is get the other radio completely apart like I did with this one right here, which is just sitting off to the side, take the, the face off of it out of the parts radio and uh, get everything all ready for us to replace that dial. And I'll show you my cleaning process and we'll get into capacitors and all of that stuff in the next video. And we'll test some of the 
capacitors that are in this unit that are completely sealed and see how well they've held up over time. So uh, we'll use my, my very, uh, I guess you could say, finicky capacitor tester. So if there's anything wrong with them, it'll definitely tell us. So it should be very interesting to see the results of those caps. And when I'm talking about those caps, I'm talking about these ones right over here. I'm talking about these ones right here. So, and it's completely sealed and completely sealed. It should be interesting to see uh, the result of those so lots of work for me to do between now and the next video, so I'm going to get on that. If you're enjoying this BC348 series, or just my videos in general, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe and tap that bell symbol. That way you'll be notified as soon as I post the next video in this series, or any other video. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level, and learning electronics in a very different and effective way, I have an ongoing electronics course on Patreon where I'm passing on my skill set to you. Definitely check it out. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the Show More tab, and I'll pin the link right at the top of the comment section. So if you click on that link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, which won't be too long into the future, take care. Bye for now.